Hello, Anatomy students. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College. And in this podcast, I'm going to finish up our muscle review using the lab models with a focus on the muscles that move the lower leg and the foot. Let's begin with the muscles of the anterior lower leg. This is the tibialis anterior. It's a superficial muscle on the shin that's easy to palpate. You can feel the anterior crest of the tibia, what we commonly call our shin bone, and just move your fingers laterally. And the first muscle your fingers encounter is the tibialis anterior. Its origins are on the tibia, the lateral condyle, as well as the proximal and lateral surfaces of the tibia. Another origin, which we don't see clearly here on the model, is the interosseous membrane. This is the ligament that's located between the medial tibia and the lateral fibula. Its tendon inserts on the first or medial cuneiform of the tarsal bones, as well as the first metatarsal of the foot, which is located uh, just below the great toe, which is digit one. There are two major actions of the tibialis anterior. The first is dorsiflexion of the foot at the ankle. And this is the movement that you make when you stand on your heels, as you lift your toes up off the ground. It also inverts or supinates the foot. And this movement is where you tilt your ankles out more laterally, kind of lifting up the soles of your feet so they're directed more medially. Located just lateral to the tibialis anterior is our next muscle. This is the extensor digitorum longus. This is a great muscle to use as a reference point for the muscles of the lower leg because it is so visually distinct. You can follow the tendons of digits 2, 3, 4, and 5. Not digit 1, the great toe, or big toe, but 2 through 5. And those tendons lead up to the extensor digitorum longus. Its origin is on the lateral condyle of the tibia, close to where this clip is as well as the proximal anterior surface of the fibula. Like the tibialis anterior, it also has an origin on the interosseous membrane between the tibia and fibula. It inserts with its four tendons onto the middle and distal phalanges of digits 2, 3, 4, and 5. Like the tibialis anterior, it also dorsiflexes the foot at the ankle, but it's called an extensor muscle for a reason. It's used to extend or lift up digits two, three, four, and five. Our next two muscles of the lower leg we can see most clearly from the lateral side. This is the fibularis longus, and its older name, which is still commonly used, is the peroneus longus. It's also referred to as one of the two perineal muscles, often called collectively the perineals. We don't see it here on the model, but it then kind of swoops around over to the medial side of the foot on its insertion points. Its origin is on the proximal lateral surface of the fibula, and its long tendon inserts on the medial side of the foot at the first cuneiform, which we also call the medial cuneiform, as well as the first metatarsal, which is just under our first digits, the big toe or great toe. The actions of the fibularis longus are opposite that of the extensor digitorum longus and tibialis anterior, which were both involved in dorsiflexion. The fibularis longus, in contrast, performs plantar flexion of the foot at the ankle. This is the movement you make when you are standing on your toes and lifting your heels off the ground. 
It also everts or pronates the foot at the ankle. We also refer to these actions as eversion and pronation. Eversion is when you roll your ankles in medially so that your soles are everted out, more laterally, away from the body. This rather awkward action is helpful when you're walking or running across very uneven surfaces. Our next muscle, our second perineal, is called the fibularis brevis, or peroneus brevis. The word brevis means brief or short, and you might be familiar with the word brevity, which means something that has a short length. And that's the case with this muscle. The muscle belly is shorter than the fibularis longus, and it also has a shorter tendon. Its origin is also on the lateral surface of the fibula, but more distally, much closer to the ankle. And its short tendon inserts onto metatarsal 5 of the little toe. The fibularis brevis performs the same actions as the longus, plantar flexion of the foot at the ankle, as well as eversion, or pronation of the foot. And together with the longus, both muscles act as a strong stabilizer for the lateral ankle. Our next muscle is the gastrocnemius, the large calf muscle of the posterior lower leg. The gastrocnemius has two heads, the medial head, and the lateral head. Each of the two heads has its own origin. The medial head's origin is on the medial condyle of the femur, and the lateral head's origin is on the lateral condyle of the femur. The shared tendon of both heads is the Achilles tendon, which inserts onto the calcaneus, the heel bone of the foot. Like the fibularis muscles, the gastrocnemius plantar flexes the foot at the ankle. But because of its origins on the condyles of the femur, it's also able to flex the leg at the knee. Our next muscle of the posterior leg is the soleus. And from our posterior view, we can see it peeking out from both sides of the Achilles tendon. We can see the soleus more clearly when I turn the model laterally to the side. The name soleus comes from a type of fish called a sole, S-O-L-E, which is a flat fish found in the ocean, kind of like a flounder. And to the early anatomists, the soleus resembled the common sole fish that they were familiar with. It's found deep to the gastrocnemius and Achilles tendon, just like a sole is found deep on the ocean floor. We can also see the soleus from the posterior view deep to the gastrocnemius when we remove the medial head of the gastrocnemius, and there is the soleus underneath. The soleus is a wide muscle with its origin on the proximal posterior tibia and fibula. And with the gastrocnemius, it inserts through the Achilles tendon onto the calcaneus. Like the gastrocnemius, the soleus plantar flexes the foot at the ankle. Our last two muscles we can see when we remove the gastrocnemius soleus and Achilles tendon. This is the flexor hallucis longus located on the lateral side of the lower leg on the fibula side. Its origin is on the distal posterior surface of the fibula as well as the interosseous membrane between the tibia and fibula. The name hallucis refers to its insertion point, which is on the hallux, the great toe. And that's the thing to be careful of when identifying this muscle. The muscle's located laterally on the side of the lateral toes, 
but its tendon inserts medially onto the great toe. Its actions include plantar flexion of the foot at the ankle, and because of its insertion point, it also flexes the great toe. And this is important in lots of movements like running or jumping and walking because it helps push the foot up off the ground. Our last muscle is the flexor digitorum longus. This is located on the medial side of the lower leg on the tibia side. Its origin is on the middle posterior surface of the tibia and its long tendon inserts onto the distal phalanges of digits two through five. So you can see how these two muscles are named after their long tendon, the flexor hallucis longus tendon inserts onto the hallux, the great toe, and the flexor digitorum longus tendon inserts onto the digits two through five the lateral toes. Similar to the flexor hallucis longus, you want to remember when identifying these muscles, the flexor digitorum longus is found medially, but its tendons insert onto the lateral toes, not digit one, the great toe. And like the flexor hallucis longus, the flexor digitorum longus plantar flexes the foot at the ankle, but it also is able to flex digits two through five.